Hey everybody, Rebel Cloud 9 here, and today I'm going to be doing a video just talking about my airbrushes. People ask me lots of questions all the time. What airbrush should I get? What airbrushes do you use? So on and so forth. So I thought I'd do kind of a general answering as many airbrushing questions as I can. The one question I'm not going to answer, and I'm sorry, I'm going to ignore it if it comes up as a question, is where did you buy such and such? Where do you get those? Um, the answer to that simply is a lot of the stuff I bought at hobby stores, online hobby stores. Just do a quick Google search for the stuff. You'll find it for yourself. Um, I'm sorry. Most of the stuff, I don't even really remember where I bought it from. And most of the stuff I bought it from was a local hobby store that you're not going to be able to buy it from. So getting all that out of the way, you can talk again about airbrushes because a lot of people have questions about airbrushing they want to get into airbrushing and they don't know where to begin and that's that's the biggest deal right where do you start with airbrushing now I'm gonna try and have a picture here right now this is a question you guys send me up a lot is is this a good airbrushing set to buy and usually what it is uh, hopefully I can find a picture of it is an airbrush compressor and a hose and sometimes one two three I've even seen one with six airbrushes that come with the kit why do you guys send me this stuff asking me is this a good airbrush or not so I'm gonna be just blunt about it right now no most of the time that you're buying those things they are China airbrushes and they are not of very good quality um, probably the best thing that you're actually buying out of that, and it's a great thing that they're so inexpensive, is you're actually getting a compressor. So you might be spending a hundred bucks on an airbrushing set. It comes with, you know, the pot to uh, clean out your airbrush and all that stuff. But really the only thing you're actually getting for value is a compressor. Airbrushes themselves aren't good, and I'll get to those in uh, just a quick second here. This is... Uh, this is one I actually sold to someone. I actually sold them the same airbrush. I wasn't even working for the company. They, they thought I was an employee. Quite a, quite a good story. Anyways, this is a Pache single action airbrush. And uh, this is actually my dad's airbrush. And um, he's had this longer than I've been alive. Uh, and I really recommend this as a starting airbrush. So if you want to get into airbrush, check out this Pache. It's a very simple airbrush to use. It's a bottom feed here. You pour the paint into the cup and you put it in the bottom like so. Uh, what's really nice about it, these parts have been lost over the years, but the, the newer ones come with different nozzles. So this is the nozzle right here. And if I were to undo this, this would come out. This is how you adjust the paint right there. And it's a, as a single action. People ask what's the difference between single action and a double or dual action airbrush. Uh, single action, you have the air in here and you press down and it does basically both. So you have a constant pressure, paint comes out. You can control the paint, but it's all in one fluid. So if you want to have wider control, you're going to have to, you know, do this all the time. So uh, if you're starting on airbrushing, I have got very good results with this, like very, very fine detail. It's a, it's a fantastic airbrush. And what I love about this airbrush, especially if you're a beginner, it is a very strong airbrush. This thing takes punishment and just keeps going, which is something you're probably going to do is damage an airbrush when you first get one. So this is what I started out with. Love this little thing. And again, I sold one because I, I loved it so much. It's just such a good airbrush. So this is what I eventually moved on to. And this is where I want to talk about the um, those Chinese airbrushes that you get in, this, in the bundles. They're basically this, which is a dual action airbrush. Um, this, this is kind of the problem. How these airbrushes work is there's a needle inside here. So I'm just going to take this back off. So here's the needle. And the needle goes all the way to the front. So I'm just going to pull this off here. Hopefully the camera will focus in on this. But there's the nozzle and the needle and there. This is so you push down on this, and that releases the air. And what happens is, is you're pulling back on this, that increases the amount of paint that comes out. So if you're pulling the trigger all the way back like that, um, you're gonna have a pretty wide spray of paint. 
Now, this is, again, the problem with these Chinese airbrushes is this is a nice airbrush. It's quite, quite nice, sophisticated airbrush, even though it is a beginner airbrush. Um, oops. And the problem with these are, when you buy these ones from China, what happens is usually what you're getting is a very crude airbrush. You're not getting exactly a precision instrument. Now, there's a plus and negative side. I'm not saying if you see one of those, don't buy it, because there is a plus side. I'm going to tell you that. Um, it's most likely, especially in my case, you're going to break this. You're going to damage the nozzle, you're going to bend the needle. And the problem with the China airbrushes is getting replacement parts. And I know there's going to be people, they're going to write down the comments, Rebels of Cloud 9, I have bought replacement parts for my airbrush over the, over the years, and yada yada yada. Yeah, it is possible, but a lot of times they're not made with the same precision. And I've actually held a couple in my hand, and pulling back on the needle like this, it was very grainy and it felt it felt horrible. I couldn't actually believe how, how poor the quality was. And in most cases you're getting that. So my advice though is if you are buying one of those sets, use the airbrushes, but as soon as you damage them, don't really worry about replacing them, finding spare parts, because it's very hard to do. Most of the time they don't care about that. They're just making one airbrush. Most of the time there isn't a company that you can go back and buy spare parts for. So who cares, right? Just go ahead, buy one of these, uh, one of those, sorry, not one of these, but one of those cheap China ones, and as soon as you break it, don't worry about it. Move on to the next one, move on to the next one, until you're more comfortable with something like this. Now this is a, as Awada has called it, this is a Neo by Awada. This is their top feeder. This is the CN. So paint goes in the top. Really like it there. You can remove the cup here. And I lost it. I dropped it. Hold on. I found it. So I have a couple options in here. This one is a 0 0.35 millimeter uh, needle. So it, it actually does get quite good results. What I like about this airbrush is it is, again, it's very, it's like the Pache. It's the next stage up. So this is, this is graduation and here you are at the next level. So I find this to be an incredibly fun airbrush. It is, again, very, very hardy. You can, you know, I've actually dropped it off the floor and I had to replace the nozzle and the needle and the airbrush, nothing was wrong with it. So I really, really like this airbrush. Um, the internal components of this airbrush are basically, they're kind of dumbed down, so it makes it more simple. Um, a lot of these internal parts in here, they have a lot of like little pieces sometimes. And uh, they've made it very, very simple. So again, this is a very, very nice airbrush. And it's very inexpensive too, for the quality that you're getting. It's a very, very nice airbrush. So they also, they also have a purple one. It's a purple box, I should say. And it's a bottom feeder like this. Okay, so the paint is on the bottom. Uh, you might be asking me, which one's better? Which one should I get? Um, top or bottom feeder. Uh, personally, I prefer the top feeders, the gravity fed ones. I like these a bit more. It, for me, that's just all personal preference though. You know, if you're more comfortable with having the paint on the bottom, go right ahead. Go do that. That's, you know, there's no, nothing wrong in that. So the next airbrush I have here is actually from Tamiya. It's from a, I, don't, I can't remember the company's name, but they basically make airbrushes for a whole bunch of companies. This is a bit more of an advanced airbrush. This is a detail airbrush. This is the super fine airbrush, high grade. This is a fantastic airbrush. I absolutely love this thing and I've only played with it a couple times but it's definitely one of my new favorite modeling toys. Um, you can take off the cap there. There's your paint. So it has very, it uses very very little paint. This is a 0 0.2 millimeter uh, needle. So it's very, very small. Um, the internal mechanism is there. It's slightly more complicated than the Iwata, slightly. Um, but this is, again, this is another dual action. But where it's the bonus of this one is it has this uh, chuck in the back here. And so you can turn it. And what it is, it's an adjustment handle for the trigger here. So let me just, so there you can see it slowly going forward. So if you want to have a constant uh, spray of a certain, you know, certain size, there you can have that adjustment. That's probably the only fault I really have with the uh, Awada Neo. And uh, it's a fantastic airbrush. It's fairly inexpensive and I've heard nothing but very, very good uh, reviews about it. 
Um, kind of my only complaint about it is it doesn't quite feel as balanced. It is a very heavy airbrush. Um, and yeah, I, I don't have that same nice balance that I get out of my Awada, but I love it. I absolutely love this little airbrush. So this is a great little airbrush to move up to. And uh, it also comes with, uh, let me just pull it out here. It also comes with an adapter if you want to have, um, I believe this is for the hose of a Badger airbrush. So you can, you can still save your airbrush. This one fits perfectly on my Iwata air, uh, hose. So I didn't have to replace that, which was really, really awesome. So, uh, moving on to compressors. Uh, sometimes you guys write me up about compressors. Now, this is just a basic compressor. And you guys have asked me, what is your, what is your uh, compressor? I don't actually know. Okay, uh, it's it's some kind of generic compressor my dad got for me years and years ago, um, and it, it does its job pretty well. It does overheat. There are other ones that you can buy, nicer ones that you can buy. This is a uh, tankless, just basic compressor. So you just you can see it's been broken a couple times. Um, there's a leg missing here. It rattled off the table. It has a horrible vibration, and I can't believe I did that again. Yeah, actually, yes, I can because it's me. So I'm just going to turn it on and show you guys what it's like here. So let me just move this out of the way. So basically if you're airbrushing, you're going to be hearing this noise constantly the entire time. Um, this little guy right here, this is what I really like. This is my little holder. So I can put my airbrush there when I'm not needing it. And uh, so yeah, there are plenty of other better compressors that you can buy. You can even use, if you have like a nail gun compressor, I'm, I'm not talking like a big tank, you know, I'm talking about a smaller tank compressor. You can actually use one of those. You just have to go ahead and, and buy a dial for them and you put that on the end here and you just turn the dial down so not as much air is coming out because um, you don't want to overload these, but you can do it. I've seen other people who have done it. Uh, so yeah, there it is. That's my compressor. Nothing fancy about it at all. Um, I think its biggest con or pro is that it has this little tab on there, a little holster. Um, hoses. Hoses, hoses, hoses. That's another big question. What is a good type of hose? There are braided hoses and then there are nylon hoses like this. Um, personally, I don't see really a, a much difference in either one. Braided hoses, they're nicer. They definitely are nicer. They're more, they have... Um, they have much more uh, durability to them. They're, they've got a protective coating around them, so you don't really bend them. But this is actually pretty good stuff. Um, so for me, you know, when people ask that, which is better, uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, sorry. Hate to burst your bubble there. Um, if you find a good one, you know, kind of go for it. So um, one of the things that's different about this is uh, the amount of air that comes through. So when you're buying some compressors, they'll have um, a little uh, gauge on the side here where you can control the amount of air that's coming through. Um, so how much air do you want to have in your airbrush and your or coming out of your compressor? Um, I generally shoot at about 25 to 20 psi. Um, that's kind of what I've seen this thing going at. I have heard some modelers go up to 45. Um, usually there are instructions on these airbrushes as to how much PSI you should be, that's air pressure, um, you should be pushing through one of these things, because if you put too much through it, it will explode. Um, I've never done that, I've never had a problem with that. Again, this thing sits about 25 PSI. Um, but what happens if I want to go lower? What happens if I want to do some very soft airbrushing? Well, that's a bit harder to do, right? Well, no, because Tamiya came to the rescue, and they made this. This is a recent product. Uh, I believe they released it last year, and I picked one up. I'm so happy about this thing. This is the Tamiya Air Control Valve. These just came out on the market, and hopefully they're catching on in North America a little bit more. It's this simple little tool here. I'm going to show you guys how this thing works. It's pretty cool. Um... A lot of you know a lot of a lot of these things have gauges you can put here uh, to control. But what ends up happening is you shoot the air through here, and you do lose a bit of the air once it gets to the airbrush, which is pretty cool about this. 
is it's basically connected right to your airbrush. So what you do is you put this on here, and this fits perfectly on any water. So if you have a badger, I'm sorry, you'll have to buy an adapter for it. And let's just perfect. So what this is is you just turn it down and there's a little hole right there and what ends up happening is it shoots the air back out. So I'm just going to show this really quick. So there I can feel it. Now the only problem with it is I don't actually know how much air pressure I'm using I, and I can't quite measure it because it's just a small device but it is you know you might be thinking that's a little clunky it's in the way um, personally I haven't found it to be a bother at all so I really love having this little thing and it's only about a ten dollar piece uh, might be might be a little higher now but I think I only paid about ten dollars for that um, and then shipping on top of that which wasn't bad so that's really a great little tool to have um, again, that's a Tamiya air control valve. So go, go take a look for one of those if you need it. The last thing I want to talk about is airbrush maintenance. Because that's a huge thing, right? Keeping your airbrush clean. This is another product from Tamiya. I just picked this one up at the same time I got the control valve. And this is the um, Spraywork Airbrush Cleaning Kit. Um, it's not a very expensive little tool and it's very, very necessary to have one in your system. You have nozzle sealant right here. It's in a little red jar. It's actually red paste. And basically you'd put that around here. Around here where your needle is. So I would I would put it all around there. And what it would help me do is it would help me have a um, better uh, seal so the air didn't leak out of there. So that's very handy to have. Um, it also comes with a nozzle wrench. You might not need that. Sometimes your airbrushes don't come with that. But there's another one in case. Uh, high viscosity grease. This is really nice to have. I like to put this on the needle and uh, helps all these parts stay nicely lubricated so I don't they don't get stuck. And then you get two cleaning brushes. This little one especially is is so handy to have because it allows you to clean inside here, which is a difficult place to get paint out of. So uh, I think all of these are fantastic to have, and it it, it just comes in one set like this. So, uh, don't ask me how much this is because I think I paid $13 for it, but I think the price went up on it just a little while ago. So, guys, that's, that's honestly, that's about it for me as far as airbrushing goes. Um, you know, if, if you, I can do another video if there's interest later on about how to thin paint, how to mix paint, how to clean an airbrush. But for right now, this is just a basic guide as to which airbrush you should buy, what you should start out with. Again, the China ones that you, that you find that are really good deals and stuff like that, they're not going to last. There are people, of course, who have made them work, who do keep them, but most of the time they're not nice precision tools as far as getting a name brand. Uh, the other nice thing about getting a name brand is you are going to have an easier time finding replacement parts because you are going to break them. They are going to wear out. You are going to damage them. Um, but if you are starting out and you want a name brand, I honestly suggest this Pache. I don't know what the name of it is, but it is easy to find on the Pache website. So you can go there and find that if you need to. That's about it for me. I don't know a lot about airbrushing, but I just wanted to answer your questions that you guys have been sending me over these past few years um, in regards as to what you should and shouldn't do. Um, which by watching my channel you mostly know what you shouldn't do. So that's about it for me guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. That's that's kind of my big worry right now is that I've forgotten something important. But I think I covered everything I wanted to. And yeah, that's about it. So good luck. Good luck hunting. If you still have any airbrush questions in regards to is this a good airbrush? Uh, send them my way. I don't mind at all. Again, I'm not going to reply to where did you get said airbrush um, because I don't know anymore. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Rubs of Cloud 9 and good luck. Happy trails with your airbrushing projects.